Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to The Puzzling Life. The Puzzling Life is my weekly-ish video series for all the little puzzle things that I want to show you that don't fit into my regular videos. Now, I was traveling for a few days this week, so I'm a little bit lighter on puzzling activity this week, but I still have a few really cool things to show you. Let's get started with a couple questions from you. Our first question is from viewer Rudy Trevino commenting on my 1986 puzzles video. Rudy writes, What is the black and white swirl puzzle in the opening? I did that one when I was young. I would love to know about it. Who made it? When was it made? Rudy, this puzzle is so cool, and I wish that I had more to tell you about it, but I honestly don't know a lot about it. Everything I know is basically what's printed on the box, so let me show you that. The puzzle you're asking about is the Awful Optic Round Puzzle. It was put out by a company called Bandwagon Manufacturing, located in Boston, Massachusetts. The box describes it as the eye mystifier for the puzzle bug. And it also advertises a second puzzle, the Red Eye Round Puzzle, which I've been looking for a copy of that one and I haven't found it yet. I did try to do some research about this online. I wasn't really able to find any information about bandwagon manufacturing. And online sellers usually date this puzzle as 1970s era, but I haven't found a good source for that. So I don't know if these sellers are just copying the information from each other. When I look at this, it looks a little earlier than 1970s to me, but I'm not an expert on this, so it could be. I will tell you, this is a super fun puzzle. It's really tricky, but it's only 200 pieces, so it's very doable. It's got a really interesting cut of concentric circles that's also very helpful. When I did it, I think it took me about two or three hours. I did it all at once. So I wish I could tell you a little more about it. If anyone out there has more information about this puzzle, please let me know. It's definitely one of my favorite puzzles I've done this year. If you can find a copy of it, go for it. Our next question is from Just Sandy, commenting on last week's Puzzling Life. Sandy asks, when will we see part two of the Pokemon puzzle? Well, Sandy, I think I have even less information to give you than what I gave Rudy. So Sandy is referring to the 5,000 piece Pokemon All-Stars by Ravensburger. I recently did a video of me solving half of this puzzle, and I promised a part two where I finish it. This project just got put on the back burner. I've done a little bit more work on it from the last time you saw it, but I really need to carve out some time to sit down and finish this thing up. It's a really fun puzzle and I am dying to get back to it. I just keep letting other projects get in the way. So Sandy, my answer is I don't know and hopefully soon. Now I did get into some good thrift shopping this week, but before we get into this week's puzzle haul, I wanna give you a look at some of my thrift store runners up. The puzzles that almost went in my basket, but that I ended up putting back on the shelf. This first one is a thousand piece by Potter Puzzles called Tarot of the Divine. This is a really great illustration by Yoshi Yoshitani. The reason I didn't buy this one was actually the price, which is silly because it was only marked for $8 and it's definitely worth that, it's still sealed. But I'm just used to getting my thrift store puzzles for like two to $4. So I ended up buying a couple other great puzzles that day that I'm going to show you that were priced a little bit lower. And sort of the same thing happened with this next one. This is a Gallison set of two shaped puzzles called Queen of the Stacks. Gallison did a bunch of these sets of two shaped puzzles in a box together. I think they're great. Again, I might have bought this one if it was just a few dollars, but at eight dollars it wasn't worth it to me that day. This next one is from the National Galleries of Scotland. It's a thousand piece puzzle of Robert Burns's The Hunt. I love this artwork and I was very close to buying this puzzle. It looks pretty difficult because it has the same kind of colors and textures across the whole image. The box was in bad shape. You can't really tell from this picture, but the box was kind of crushed, which makes me worry that all the pieces might not be in it. So ultimately I left this one on the shelf. And finally, I found this one in an antique store. This is a Return of the Jedi puzzle. 
from 1983. It's 70 pieces. It was really hard to pass this one up, but honestly, the image just doesn't look that fun. Okay, so those are the ones that I didn't buy. Let's take a look at the ones that I got instead. Okay, this first puzzle I felt so lucky to find. This is the Night Garden. It's from Emily Winfield Martin's Dream World series by New York Puzzle Company. I have seen this puzzle all over social media. The image is fantastic, and it's just always such a great day to find in a thrift store a puzzle that's been on your wish list. The whole Dream World series is really beautiful, and I like New York Puzzle Company. They have really fun random cut pieces. Okay, next, this is a 500 piece from Potter Puzzles. I've never tried this brand before, so I'm excited for that. The puzzle is called Women in Science by illustrator Rachel Ignatowski, and it depicts all these female scientists through the years, like Jane Goodall, Ada Lovelace, Mae Jemison. This one looks really fun, and I think it's probably gonna be pretty easy because of all of this little detail in the background. Okay, next up we have another new brand to me. This is by Robert Frederick, which is a UK-based brand. This puzzle is called Nuance. It's a thousand-piece gradient puzzle. I think it's so stunning, and you just gotta do a gradient every now and then, right? Okay, and finally, this last one is super exciting. This is a 1999 Seiko by artist Peter Max called Instant Nutriment. Peter Max's psychedelic artwork is amazing and it's so good for puzzles. I know this one's gonna be a lot of fun. I like Seiko's pieces from the 90s, but their boxes are really flimsy and they're the kind that you had to cut open on the bottom, so they always have ragged edges. They just want to fall apart. So I don't buy a lot of these old Seikos, but this one is so special. Really excited to find it. All right, let's close this out by looking at the puzzles I worked on this week. All right, I spent a few days with my dear friend Cynthia this week, and she has a swimming pool at her house, so I knew I had to bring along this puzzle by The Puzzled Company. It's called Geometry Homework. The Puzzled Company cuts their puzzles by water jet. So the puzzles are waterproof and they float. So I seized the first chance I had to get into a pool with this puzzle. We decided to make a game of it by just throwing all the puzzle pieces loose into the pool. So I'd have to chase them all down to put the puzzle together. This was a lot harder than I expected. <laughs> and the puzzle pieces kept getting pulled into the filter box. But I didn't lose any pieces and I got the whole puzzle put together and I had a lot of fun doing it. I love this puzzle design. It's just 121 pieces. This is their mini size. And the design is tricky enough to keep it really interesting, even if you don't throw it into a pool. Thank you to the puzzle company for giving me this puzzle to try. So the other thing that I did with Cynthia was to try out my first round of puzzle chess which we did with this acrylic puzzle from the Influencer Initiative. The Influencer Initiative has just put out this line of puzzles that's a collaboration with influencer artists, and they gifted me a couple of their puzzles to try. This one is called Smile Bright by artist Jason Naylor. Now, if you haven't heard of Puzzle Chess, just very briefly, it's a speed puzzling game. It's one-on-one -on -one using a chess clock. You both start with 30 minutes on your clock. When you get a piece into the puzzle, you stop your clock, which starts your opponent's clock counting down, and they have to find their piece, and you go back and forth like this. Whoever runs out of time first loses, or if you make it to the end and neither of you run out of time, whoever has the most time left on their clock at the end is the winner. So. I do a few puzzles a week, and Cynthia does a few puzzles a year, so it wasn't really a fair fight. I definitely destroyed her at this game, but we had a lot of fun doing it, and actually this was like a perfect puzzle to do it with. It's 150 pieces, big pieces, nice, bright, easy to see colors, a very good time. Okay, this next puzzle I started but did not complete. Let me tell you about this puzzle. This is a pomegranate puzzle. It's a painting by Peter Bruegel called The Wedding Dance. This puzzle has been sitting in my to-do pile for quite a while now. 
I bought it at a thrift store, and I think even when I bought it, I wasn't crazy about the image. I'm pretty sure I only picked it up because I just love pomegranate puzzles. They are absolutely one of my favorite brands. But so this has just been sitting on the shelf for months and months now because every time I look at it, I just think, that looks really hard in just kind of an unrewarding way. It's all these dark, similar colors, similar shapes across the whole thing. Just brown, brown, brown. So this week I finally pulled it out. I said, you know what? I'm gonna do this puzzle now and get it out of here. And I took it out and I sorted the pieces and I built the frame, which was not easy. And then I thought, well, that's enough for today. And I picked up my puzzle board to move it aside and I dumped everything on the floor. And I just thought, well, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. <laughs> So I packed it all back up in the box and I'm not gonna be finishing this puzzle. If anyone likes the look of this and you wanna give it a go, check down in the description. I'm gonna give you instructions on how to let me know you're interested. If I've still got it, I'm happy to send it to you. Okay, one last puzzle. This one was part of last week's haul. This is a Zen Chalet puzzle, 500 pieces called Mystery Land. I was very excited to dig into this one. Really cool, imaginative, spooky image. The whimsy pieces in this one are fantastic. It's all sorts of mysterious and spooky shapes. Cats and bats and crows and moons and eyes and... I enjoyed this one a lot. The orange came together really quickly. The rest of it took a lot longer. But I love the piece cuts from Zen Chalet. I think they're a lot of fun to work with even when the image is really hard. This would be a great one to get for Halloween time. I'm definitely gonna be keeping this one in my collection. All right, that's everything I've got going on this week. Be sure to tell me what's going on in your puzzling life. Mm -hmm.